In this video, we're going to talk about the retrosynthesis of ethers. And it's the idea that you need to be able to predict the starting materials, materials and the conditions uh, for which these react. Right. So based on your ideas of, you know, ethers in acidic conditions, along with, you know, our non nuclear based sodium bar, uh, sodium hydride, you need to be able to, to predict the starting material. So maybe I want maybe on an exam, they told you, OK, let's make this. Right. What would be your starting materials? Well, again, we know that if I have an ether, I could, this is William ethers and synthesis, right? So I could break this bond here and say, okay, well, my retrosynthesis, this double arrow here just kind of means that I'm just going back to my starting products, starting materials, right? So if I break this bond here, I could see that I could create this from some sort of X, right? So some sort of this molecule X, where X is an alkyl halide plus, right, or alcohol. All right, so we do this plus our alcohol, and we add NaH. We get our product. All right now, X is an alkyl halide, so you know this may be bromine or chlorine or even iodine. It doesn't matter. All right, so putting everything into perspective, we could take this. All right, we take this plus this material here. and sodium hydride, and we synthesize to get this molecule here. Again, oxygen gets deprotonated, right? Negatively charged, so attacks my carbon, dispels my iodide, right? So now I get this whole section that is bonded to an oxygen that has this, this, this propyl group there. Right. So that would be the retrosynthesis of this molecule. So what about this one? What about this one is a little bit slightly more complicated. All right. So what if I asked you to make this? All right. So make this compound. What would be your starting materials? Well, again, remember we said that uh, Williams ethers and synthesis favors S into chemistry. So unlike the first one, and maybe I should uh, totally emphasize this for this one, it doesn't matter which way, where you break the bond, right? Because our molecule is symmetrical. So on either side, we have both primary carbons, All right? So either set up for good S into chemistry. Over here, look, look, look what's look what's what's different now. Both in both cases, it will work. But we're looking for re which reaction occurs faster. So maybe let's see. The smart thing to do here is to break my bond here. Yes. So I could break my bond here and create this from some sort of, you know, bromine group right there plus my alcohol. And notice when you're splitting, all you're doing is just put in the OH on one side and just uh, put in the, the alkyl halide exactly um, in front of that, that the, the carbon that's bonded to the to the alcohol. So, so that's just a pattern there. So this will be my starting materials. I'm going to react these with sodium hydride, right? And this will give me my product. Now. The reason why I choose this path is because look, once this oxygen gets deprotonated, I have a primary alcohol here, a primary, a primary uh, carbon here that's set up for S and two chemistry. But look what happens if we did it the other way, right? What if we broke? What if we actually broke the bond here? Then now you can see that I have this molecule here. Plus, I'm gonna just use chlorine this time, right? So I'm gonna use chlorine this time, and sodium hydride and what would we get now we would still get the product but at a much slower rate and it's simple because this is now secondary right one hydrogen this is now secondary uh carbon right so be careful whenever you have you know an unsymmetrical molecule like in, in such fashion 
be careful of what you would what you choose as as uh, your alcohol and your your alkylide. So maybe let's look at another one. All right, so maybe we were asked, okay, well, make this. All right, so make this. What would be your starting materials? Again, I'm looking for which one will give me SN2 chemistry. So I want my nucleophile to be, I want my electrophile to be uh, something that that is very open. So the only way of actually doing this is that actually I'm going to actually have to break the bond here. And can everybody see why? So I'm going to set up this to be my nucleophile. So doing the retrosynthesis, I'm going to set up this to be my nucleophile. All right, my alcohol there. All right, so I'm going to set up this plus bromine. All right, so I'm going to take these two and react them on the sodium hydride. Now look, once this once this sodium um, this base deprotonates the oxygen, right? It has a primary it has a primary uh, carbon to attack. If we retrosynthesize it the other way, right? Now we have uh, now we have something that looks like this. Right? Plus an alcohol well plus an alcohol right and what would this actually give you this is actually e2 chemistry all right you will not get williams ether synthesis here again and maybe we should kind of illustrate why all right once my oxygen gets deprotonated with uh, sodium hydride i have this right if an oxygen is negatively charged Right. And this is very basic. Now we have something that's a tertiary carbon. This is prime for E2. This is actually prime for E2. And in this case, it actually has no other choice. So we'll actually go for one of these hydrogens here. Right. Attack. And then kicks in to form that double bond there and kicks off the alkyl halide. All right, so this is E2 chemistry. So you never, you always want to do retro, retrosynthesis in such fashion that you get SN2 chemistry with your electrophile or, you know, the, the, the molecule containing your leaving group having some sort of primary or secondary carbon, preferably primary if you can. 